Hello folks, fellow parishioners of St. Jude's and Immaculate Conception Parishes in uh, the county of Louisa, Virginia, and anybody else who happens to be uh, listening in, you're all so terribly welcome. I'm Dr. Larry Cavanaugh, and I'm going to be talking today about apparitions of Mary, in particular, uh, an apparition of Mary associated with Einsiden in Switzerland, um, a monastery that has become a large abbey and uh, 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 an apparition that's also known as uh, of the Black Madonna of Einsiden. This itself can be confusing because there's quite a few churches, mainly in Europe, that have statues of Mary that they refer to as the Black Madonna and that they have their stories associated with uh, the appearance of Mary in this fashion. Um, but this one, uh, is a particularly Benedictine kind of apparition. It involves uh, St. Meinrad, an early Benedictine monk who followed the rule of Benedict famously well. And um, about um, Bishop Conrad of Constance and a vision that he had, which was a particularly striking vision. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the story and I hope you um, are impressed by St. Meinrad and about the dedication of the people who uh, have uh, worked so hard to make him and um, the Mary of Einsiden uh, such a the famous person that she is over there, if not so much over here in the United States. So please enjoy. We can't really tell the story of the Black Madonna without first telling the story of St. Meinrad. Meinrad was a person born of a wealthy family in Switzerland and Germany, that area. And as a young man, he had a vocation, wanted to become a monk. Uh, he began his career around Zurich and uh, was given a uh, small monastery and became the abbot very quickly. And he was on a path to uh, huge success. However, this is not quite what Meinrad wanted. Here's a um, statue of what Meinrad might have looked like as a young man. Uh, he wanted more peace, more quiet, more solitude, not the companionship of a lot of other abbots. He truly wanted to be a hermit type monk. Uh, so he searched around the area and near Etzel, he found a place where the citizens of the town said that they would feed him if he would become their, their hermit. And that's what he did. He built a small uh, house uh, in the woods around Etzel, and there he could read his books and do his contemplation and hopefully be the kind of hermit that he wanted to be. Of course, this was not to be so. The people of Etzel, if they fed you, they felt that you, they were entitled to consult with you, receive uh, blessings from you, um, get help from you, get aid and comfort from you. And so Meinrad, in, in his uh, uh, pl place, was really pestered by the people of Etzel to uh, help them. Not that he objected, but he needed more solitude. So he went a little further into the woods around Etzel to what's called the deep forest, the dark forest, um, the um, Finsterwald, as it was called. And near Lake Zurich, he found a place that was uh, even more solitude. He brought with him a gift that he had received from Abbess Hildegard of Zurich, and it was a statue made out of linden wood of the Blessed Virgin and her baby Jesus. Uh, the statue was probably not black and dark when he received it, because linden, linden wood is not a particularly dark wood. Uh, it could be that it took on its color later when people lit a lot of candles around it and the smoke from the candles darkened the wood. Linden wood would have been darkened by candle smoke. At any rate, he brought that with him to his new hermitage, which was called Einsiedelen. 
which means, I think, in German, a hermitage, a, 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 a place for one, a seat for one person. And uh, he built a small chapel there. You can see the chapel and the uh, statue uh, of the Virgin and, and child inside there and uh, Meinrad contemplating. He still wasn't left alone. He was just harder to get to. The people from the nearby villages still brought him food and occasionally brought him valuable gifts, which he always gave away to people. Um, Meinrad was in contemplation. Here's a picture of Meinrad con in contemplation. And who could imagine that nearby his hermitage, Lake Zurich, there would be one day a very large cathedral built, uh, remembering Meinrad and remembering the blessed statue that he had brought with him. Nonetheless, trying to follow the rules of Benedict, Meinrad was very uh, aware of hospitality to guests as being a very strong rule. Uh, the rule of Benedict specifies that if someone comes knocking on your door asking for shelter or food, you should give it to them. Well, as it turned out, um, some thieves, robbers in the area f f uh, knew that Meinrad was there and they got the idea that since people had given him so many gifts, he must be very wealthy, they should steal all his stuff. So they knocked on his door and Meinrad kind of knew that what they were and what they were up to, but nevertheless, the rules of hospitality. He said, come on in, let me give you a meal. Sit down at my table, I will feed you, and after I've fed you, then you can do what you need to do. Uh, anything I have will be yours. And boy, what an invitation if you're a bunch of thieves. So they ate his food, and after they ate his food, they killed him. They beat him up. And they tried to take everything he had, which, sad for them, wasn't much. So beating him up and taking what they wanted and then running away, the last thing that Meinrad said to them was, if you kill me, please lay me on my cot and put a candle at my head and at my feet. Well, they did that. They didn't light the candles, but it was later discovered that he did have a candle at his head and, and feet. The guys didn't get very far. As soon as they reached the town, townspeople got wind of them also, captured them, arrested them, brought them to a quick trial, and executed them. So that was the end of, of them, but it was also the death of Meinrad. Not surprisingly, for his efforts showing that hospitality came first, Meinrad is now honored as the patron saint of hospitality. So please, St. Meinrad, Martyr of Hospitality, intercede for us. As famous as some of the stories about Meinrad are, the story about how the dedication of the new abbey in Einsiedeln was consecrated makes an even better story. Um, the place where all this happens is in Switzerland, in the place where Meinrad had his hermitage and Boy, we have problems pronouncing the name of this. Uh, online, the uh, uh, Google German English Pronunciation Dictionary says, call this Einsiedeln, or Einsiedel, or Einsieden. Um, when you're at St. Meinrad's in Indiana, they pronounce it Einsiedelen, Einsiedelen. Um, you name it, they'll pronounce it that way, and I'm sure it's all wrong. Anyway, here's a partial map of Switzerland. If these names mean anything to you, that's where this thing is located and um, moving right along. Here's uh, the picture to reminisce of Meinrad in the days when he was a hermit and he had that little cabin uh, and inside the cabin church was the statue of the Blessed Virgin holding the child Jesus. Now I've been calling that the Black Madonna. I'm not really sure if that carving was black at the time that Meinrad had it and was using it as an object of adoration and prayer. Since it was made out of linden wood, that's a light colored wood, so it might have been a light colored object. How did it get dark? Possibly centuries later, as pilgrims lit candles underneath it, the smoke from the candles 
was absorbed by the linden wood, and linden wood does absorb quite well, and that blackened it. The locals liked to continue to leave the statue black. Apparently, there was some period in history when somebody tried to clean the statue, and uh, they were stopped because they wanted the statue to remain black. It's because the forest that it's located in are also referred to as the dark woods. So dark woods, dark statue, you get the point. Well, about 100 years, 150 years or so after the time of Meinrad, along about the mid 940s AD, um, Blessed Eberhardt, a Benedictine, decided through some pressure to take the hermitage that housed Meinrad and convert it into a large abbey for the Benedictines. And he did this. He was quite a builder. His original abbey church may have looked like this, um, a much improved version of the church that Meinrad had built for himself, and um, may have looked like this. I can't guarantee that this was, this was true. At any rate, it was in um, 948 AD that uh, Eberhard declared that the church was finished, the abbey was ready to open, and he invited Conrad, the Bishop of Constance, and this is what Bishop Conrad, who is himself also a saint, invited him to come and dedicate that abbey church. Well, Conrad and a lot of followers came because it was going to be a grand ceremony. The um, I think there's a picture of what the church may have looked like if you could open the doorway a little bit wider and see inside to see that statue very, very prominently displayed there. As the story goes, the night before the, the night before the dedication, Conrad and a bunch of his uh, follower sycophants, I guess, uh, other priests and fellow travelers went for a midnight adoration in the chapel. And this was Conrad's custom to uh, pray beginning shortly before midnight and uh, as his nighttime prayers. When Conrad entered the chapel, though, shortly after, <clears throat> he and his party apparently heard a great host of angels chanting and singing melodies. They heard Everything and they saw everything in the chapel bright as the sun, altar completely illuminated. And then coming down from heaven, they saw all the evangelists uh, Peter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, including um, St. Gregory, St. Augustine, St. Ambrose, I'm sure St. Benedict. And finally, in addition to this magnificent profession, procession, I'm probably leaving out some of the names, Jesus Christ himself came down, and his mother came down. And Jesus Christ himself, in Conrad's vision, offered a mass at that altar. And the angels were singing, Holy God, have mercy on us and in the court of the glorious virgin. Blessed be the Son of Mary, um, who has come to this place and who is to reign for ages and ages. And according to Conrad, Jesus Christ himself consecrated the altar that he said the Mass on. And the Blessed Mother herself was there, as was, of course, the statue of the Blessed Mother holding the infant and surrounded by this glorious host of heaven. And that was um, Conrad's dream. And he may or may not have seen the statue darkened, or he may have just seen the statue uh, in an original light and state with linden wood. At any rate, that's the current statue which is on display in the Abbey, and presumably it's not the original, but it's as close a model as we can, can come from. Well, the next day came, and it was time for Conrad to consecrate this chapel. 
And he said, no, I can't do it. Jesus Christ himself was here last night. This chapel has already been consecrated. I cannot consecrate something that's already been consecrated. And he refused to go in and consecrate the chapel. Well, this is very disturbing to uh, all the uh, VIPs who had come to attend this great ceremony, which was going to be pretty great. And they insisted, they pushed him to say, no, you've got to do this. All these people are here. You have to do it. Conrad said, no, I won't do it. No, I won't do it. Well, they kind of pushed him into the chapel. And as the story goes, as he was pushed into the chapel, he fell down and this great voice said, you can't, and it was presumably the voice of God saying something to the effect, you cannot consecrate this. Stop. This is already consecrated. Stop, brother. This chapel has been divinely consecrated. So Conrad did not consecrate this, chalice, this chapel. It was not very long after this. Uh, by the way, here's one other picture of um, a 15th century version of a, a German picture of how the mother holding the child may have looked in the chapel. Not too many years later, around, 19, around 964, only less than 20 years later, the existing pope at the time was Leo VIII. And Leo VIII issued a papal bull testifying that the vision of Conrad was accurate. That abbey church was in fact divinely dedicated. It's an object of worship, an object of adoration, and I'm the Pope and I say so. This is one picture of Leo VIII. Here's another picture of Leo VIII. And I do have to tell you something about Leo VIII. He was Pope from 960, from 964 to 965 AD. He was Pope during a pretty tough time for the church. He was actually the anti-Pope from 963 to 964. And then he got thrown out as that, of that job, and then reinstalled as the real pope from 964 to 965 when he died. Um, however, his qualifications notwithstanding, he did issue a valid papal bull, and um, that's what the Abbey Church stands on now. Here's another picture of the vision of the Abbey that would come, the Abbey, Abbey of Einsiedel. Um, as you can see, the spelling there is even different from the spelling that we use today. Um, and it's uh, Mary, standing guardian above a greatly improved, greatly advanced Abbey. And today, the Abbey of Einsiedel looks like this. It's quite the thing. And it's not the only Abbey in the Switzerland German area that has a dedication to uh, the Black Madonna. Uh, she is quite the patron in that area. Uh, just to close on that particular little story of the Abbey cons consecration, our current day Vatican has issued some actual postage stamps. This one is uh, not a Vatican stamp, but a Swiss stamp, Helvetia would be the stamps of Switzerland, where they have issued uh, stamps commemorating the Abbey and commemorating the Black Madonna. So uh, it's quite the thing and quite a, quite a good story. And so it's been more than a thousand years since the time of Meinrad and Conrad and all the goings on at Einsiedeln in the dedication of the church there. After all this time has passed, you might want to ask the question as you see, what can we say about Our Lady of Einsiedeln or Black Madonna today? Well, for one thing, nowadays there's more than one place in Europe that has a statue of Mary that they call the Black Madonna and a story of a visitation associated with her. This is a picture of the Black Madonna in Poland in a place called Czestochowa. Uh, this is a picture of the Black Madonna in Montserrat. Uh, this Black Madonna is the patroness of Catalonia. So it's a Spanish 
black Madonna. This black Madonna appears in the cathedral in Chartres and um, has made, hist made uh, the news fairly recently because uh, it went through a restoration. The statue was restored from its original smoky black exterior, cleaned up, and it looks like the picture on the right. And that particular restoration was not necessarily greeted with universal approval by the uh, parishioners. I'm not going to talk about all those other black Madonnas because this is ours, the black Madonna of Einsiedeln. And what can we say about her? Well, first of all, that nice little abbey church that was dedicated now looks like this. Uh, it's expanded quite a bit from the time of Eberhard, as you can see. But this is the Benedictine uh, Abbey in Einsiedeln. Um, the church and a very large abbey in the background. And then the front foreground is a little uh, shrine cupola with a statue of uh, the Blessed Virgin. And inside the church is what mm, is as close as we can come to the original uh, a statue that was, um, I guess, blackened by all the smoke of the vigil candles. And that's the one that appears in Switzerland in Einsiedeln. And there are other churches in the area which are also named after this particular Madonna, but they stem from this one. Even in the United States, if you go to Indiana, to so southern Indiana, a little place called St. Meinrad, Indiana, which is close to the town of Ferdinand, Indiana, you will find a monastery called um, the Arch Abbey of St. Meinrad, which is an abbey that was formed initially as a missionary parish of that Arch Abbey of Einsiedeln that we saw a few slides ago, although it's become uh, quite the thing in its own right and uh, worth visiting, and they give great retreats there. Uh, the Abbey, the Arch Abbey of St. Minard in Indiana, the main church is in fact dedicated to Our Lady of Einsiedeln. And in the St. Minard church, this is the statue that you will find. And it's uh, a good replica resemblance of our Black Madonna. And um, so she's become famous. The monks at the Abbey there uh, conduct um, a pilgrimage to her uh, every year around the time of her feast day. And there's, they've composed an antiphon to Our Lady of Einsiedeln. I am very dark but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem. Therefore the king has loved me and brought me into his chambers. Lady of Einsiedeln, pray for us. O God, you have blessed us with the loving protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through the intercession of Our Lady of Einsiedeln, hear our prayers and keep us in your constant care. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And to add just a little bit more to the fame of the story, uh, the Vatican, bless their hearts, has issued postage stamps uh, in celebration of Meinrad, the uh, vision of Our Lady there in Incident and the Abbey in Incident. So um, that's the story. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for listening.